Love or Crafts writes, I've just started a book about me album. I've been meaning to scrapbook some pages about myself, but I've never done them, so decided to do a whole book about me, including when I was a little girl. I got started, but I haven't really worked on it much since. Glitter Girl, can you help Love or Crafts set out her story of self? Of course I can. This is a great question for this month in particular because in the garden we have um, lots and lots of all about me style layouts so you'll have lots of examples and we're going to spend two adventures on this topic one with an older photo and one with a current photo so we'll start with an older photo this week so this will essentially become a then and now type um, layout and you might choose to put them both together so I tell you that in advance if you want to follow along and make a then page this week and a now page next week then you could put them side by side in your album I'm going to put them in separate albums and I'll show you uh, a little bit later in this video an album that is all about my growing up um, so all pages from when I was a kid and uh, that way I'll be putting this page in that album and my now page will go in my current 2013 album so starting with a photo that's um, a little bit pesky it's an old Polaroid it's got quite a bit of damage to the um, to the bottom here the photo isn't at risk it's just that there's a lot of um, kind of glue and paper bits that have been stuck there over the years where it's been in various photo albums and on bulletin boards and things like that and it just, um, I'm afraid to scrape too much of that off or use a solvent to get that off because I don't want to ruin the photo. So I'm going to be scrapbooking the actual Polaroid and I'm not too worried about bringing the embellishment over the bar here because then I could cover up this kind of old glue that's not very important and uh, not very pretty either. Uh, but I have made a digital copy of this to save the photo itself, the image, to my photo library and then I scrap the original. That way um, I have both in case I ever want to go back to that photo. Now I prefer with um, slightly older photos like this where the color quality in the photo itself was warmer which happened um, for many decades the, the photo quality just happened to be that you got warmer shades on film than more recent and more accurate to the eye cameras and so I'm going to go with mostly papers that are printed on a cream base rather than a white base so you can see here some examples now these two are from October afternoon and it's always October afternoon that I think of when I go and um, when I think of cream based papers because they pretty much put everything on this cream and um, cardstock rather than a stark white base but you can see this is a cream base pattern and this pattern doesn't have any white or cream it's just um, tone on tone with the color so you do get um, pages or papers that are not in any way white or cream based and that's absolutely fine. This next one is also cream based that's from Dear Lizzie Lucky Charm. And then to show you the contrast this is a white based pattern paper this is from My Mind's Eye Cut and Paste and if you look at the spaces here you can see the difference in the color quality between the white and the cream. Now with a Polaroid you have a white frame anyway so really you can use both you could use um, either I just prefer um, and I like how it works with most of my pages all together in that album to use more cream based papers but I still wanted to include some of the elements here and they don't all have a huge amount of white so cards like this one and this one the white is more obvious this one is more like a cream based paper this one has just a tiny bit of white in the lettering so and that means that it's a little bit more flexible I don't think that's a hard, that this is a hard and fast rule of cream and white based papers I think they can look beautiful together but I think if you've never been aware of if a paper is on white or on cream it can make a big difference when you start to look at them if you're ever wondering why does this collection not go well with that collection or why does one really go well with um, with another it tends to be um, a deciding factor and a lot of papers that are all on cream will go together even if they're from different manufacturers but they may look a little jarring against a stark white and vice versa so if it's not something you've looked at before then um, definitely worth having a look now I wanted to bring in some colors that maybe wouldn't first be obvious 
um, but I wanted to mix red and pink because they're both in the photo, but seeing that they are both in the photo also just reminded me of how much those two colors come through in memories of my childhood. Um, so I decided I'd go ahead and make that quite obvious and I've chosen a red small alphabet and a pink large alphabet. I have some labels um, that should come in handy. That's also October afternoon, so they're cream and will match the papers. And some Jenny Bolin bits and pieces. Uh, these two are, are new releases, and the uh, flashcards that all have different words and colors and things like that, and the um, flatback flare badges. And then this is an older piece where um, I've used the other part of the rub-on, but it, I love this old butterfly rub-on where you can put it underneath and just get this little bit of texture. And you can still tell what it is, but you don't need the whole shape overpowering the smaller photo because the butterfly would have been bigger than the picture. And this was because I really wanted to bring in a little bit of something gold. Now there are lots of current um, gold rub-ons as well, especially from Jenny Bolin, so you, I'll link those up in the store and you can have a look at different designs. But this one is slightly older and you might have it in your stash already. And then I think I'm going to um, bring in my um, nailed it stamps. Um, these are out of stock at the moment, but if you pl click that request and notify, they will be back and um, just waiting for them to come back in stock. And to bring in a little bit more of the gold, um, some Heidi Swap color shine. Starting with a layered background with that pink frame around the edge and then the blue aged print in the center. And my composition is going to go on this top third line. So the photo will be um, up here and then that's going to give me more space to write at the bottom of the page depending on how much I decide I want to include. And all of the paper elements, the letter stickers and everything else like that is going to go up here in the top third of the page. So what I want to start with is a little bit of the gold ink and I just kind of want to dot it about in a zigzag up here on this third line, this imaginary line as if I've decided, divided the page into thirds. And some of this, of course, will get covered up, but um, should give me a little bit of that gold sparkle that will come through even in the finished design. To build the composition at the top of the page, I can see this kind of imaginary line of dividing the page into thirds as a good place for me to start, but it is an imaginary line and I need to make something a little bit more obvious um, so that the composition will be a bit easier on the eye. So I'm going to start with a horizontal line that's going to be centered here and just using the pattern underneath to make sure it lines up and everything's going to be built on top of this box so that now that um, part of the page has a little bit more weight and the sparkly uh, mist is just peeking out from behind so that's exactly what I wanted not too much just a little bit to give it a bit of um, a, a bit of sparkle but also just something that had a little bit of contrasting texture like the gold lame mist. My photo is going to go up here and so are my other page elements. So I've gathered a bunch of different die cuts that I want to include. So I have a variety in kind of three by four and other smaller sizes. Plus I have a larger card for writing. Now this is from the Craft Project Life Core Kit, and the exclamation point was just one I knew I wouldn't particularly use. And that design was just not particularly my style, a little bit too um, bold graphic, and, and I wanted to make it a bit softer. But I love that this kit is on cream-based paper rather than white. So I um, thought I could use this one by turning it on its side. I'll cover up the exclamation point, and then I just have the nice cream grid in the right size and ratio that can hold all my writing. So that's going to go down the side here. And I can go ahead and tuck that underneath. So now I have a nice dedicated place on my page for the writing. And I can decide how all of these pieces can work together. I like the idea of having this run in a nice central block so that these two pieces go together and then the other pieces are more um, in support of what's there. I think this one may be a little bit too white for my liking. I was trying to mix the pink and the red and 
It is more of a really pale cream than a stark white, but I'll see how I go. I might just use a label sticker instead. And this one can certainly work. But where would I then put this larger one? So maybe this needs to go behind on this side so that this would have a spot. That would work well because now the arrows are right next to the photo and I have just a little bit of an edge of my grounding block behind there. Still not completely convinced of this one. What happens if I put it directly behind the photo? I think actually I might like that better. But then I do feel I want something on this horizontal. And maybe that's not too much of a contrast. It is definitely a contrast between these three shades. But I think um, this one is a little bit in between the white of the Polaroid and the, the more aged cream of the flashcard. So maybe that can help bring it all together a bit. And I wanted to bring in that butterfly rub-on. And because that needs to be tucked underneath somewhere, I want to make sure that I do that before I run out of space. Now, of course, now I've done this, it looks like it would be easier to have the other side of the butterfly, but clearly that was what happened the first time around. That composition suited the other side of the butterfly, too. It may be that I just use the top bit. Of course, the other option would be to bring it down here behind the journaling, and maybe that's a better balance. Yeah, and use less of the width than I expected because I don't want this to become heavy. I want this to be a, a more narrow column. But if I just tuck it under a little bit more, and then all these pieces are going to fit together. So I'll go ahead and start adhering these so I don't lose the order I want them in. Okay, so now I have this large, larger element that I can move around. That means I can take it away from the page for a moment and add the rub on and then glue that larger top block down. So here's my basic page structure, and I think working in just one section of the page if you're scrapbooking a single Polaroid on a 12 by 12 space can help um, keep everything nice and concentrated so that you don't have to kind of search for the photo amongst a whole 12 by 12 page of different things. This gives me a clear space to write, and this box helps with my title, but if my title's a bit too long, it could go below the photo here. I'm gonna go ahead and add the title with my two different sets of letter stickers, the small in the red and the large in the pink, and then um, focus on my journaling and finally my embellishment. If you find journaling about older memories or photos that you don't remember the specific event a little bit more challenging, then don't feel that you have to be tied to just what's in the picture. I started with the title and thought maybe I could just use something as generic as childhood memories, but wanted to give uh, myself a little bit more focus than that. And I had the card here already included about play, and this is obviously a playtime photo. So I decided I would use happy memories and then create a bullet pointed list of things that were happy memories, but also things that were specific to play in my childhood. So there are three bullet points, and there are one of these, the middle one, relates to what's in the photo. The other two are just more random memories of um, that kind of era of my life and, and um, that, that time period, but I don't necessarily have photos for them. In fact, I, I'm pretty sure that a photo wouldn't have existed of the two things in the other um, in the other two bullet points because they were so everyday that we didn't tend to photograph them in that um, day and age. We might now because we take a lot more pictures. Um, so don't um, feel that you have to be penned into any particular photo. And in fact, if I didn't really remember what was in this, I could have told three other memories and left that one out entirely. But I do remember just enough um, 
of different things that if I look in the detail of the picture, I could come up with something that would be relevant. And now I, am, I have all my words included, so I'm going to go ahead and work on some embellishment. And I wanted to bring something up here below the photo. And I have that um, the little flare badge, which I think could be perfect for this um, more significant spot there and then maybe something a little horizontal to cover the um, the rest there and a label sticker might be the right sort of thing and I used a label sticker up here to complete the rest of the title because memories wasn't all going to fit on this card and, and it's not really a requirement of course to put the rest on a letter sticker but I thought it was just a little bit easier to read if I included it on another and um, smaller horizontal element rather than running it right onto the background paper think I'll look for um, a label that would match here and then see what smaller embellishments will um, complete the page. The label stickers I pulled out at the beginning didn't have quite the right um, shape to fit in the gap but not cover the photo. I wanted to run it right up to the edge of the photo so it looks like the photo is tucked away behind there but actually you're seeing all of the photo. It's right there on the edge um, and that way I could get all that glue that was right at the bottom or right at the top of the the white frame right below the photo without um, without actually having to put stickers on top of the picture, if that makes sense. And so since the labels were a bit of the wrong shape, I went back and had a look for some other things and came up with these stickers from Crate Paper that are um, shaped like little strips of washi tape. And there are a few different companies that do those. I know there are some in the Simple Stories collections and also in the Pebbles collection. Pebbles do them just as a sheet all on their own. And the other two, Crate and Simple Stories, include them in a larger sticker sheet. So I was able to run some horizontal tapes here and then um, wanted to continue that to see if I can make it match elsewhere on the page. So I added a tiny little one up here by the title and this strip at the bottom of the um, journaling. So that's going to give me this nice little framed um, area of the page. So here's everything that's important in between these three elements. So I want to make sure that that um, stays quite clear. I don't want to add a lot more to this page but I do want to add just a few stamped words so I'm going to use the and um, that's real life uh, and then the stars and use some brown ink and bring the wording to this corner so that this little area of the embellishment triangle will have a little bit more weight. So I'm just running this so that it's on the pattern paper but right along the edge of the journaling card. And then the same ink, I'll do the stars up here at the top and that um, should make everything stay in this nice um, corner design where it's easy for your eye to start up here where you would normally start at the top of the page and read across and read down and not miss anything along the way. And that's where I'm going to call this one finished for this week. So your challenge is to is to create a page of your own that is a then page, a page of you in the past. Now it doesn't have to be quite this old. You are more than welcome to do a page with a photo that's just from last year or um, something that you know has been in your two scrap file for a little bit longer. Um, and go ahead and share it with us in the gallery. And now just before we leave, I am going to um, just have a quick a little flip through of one of my early years albums to give you an idea of how all those different pages live together and um, they're in chronological order but the um, pages were made at all different times so you'll see a variety of styles and I'm quite happy for them to all live together like that because I like the story they tell um, but I hope that's a little bit helpful for you and I'll see you very soon thanks for watching
Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com. 